Welcome to Seasonal Job Pro, the channel that tries to bring you all the information about seasonal jobs. Today we're talking about housekeeping jobs, where they are, how much you can make, and what's involved. First though, we're going to try and answer the age-old question of, what is a seasonal housekeeping job? So, let's get to work. What is a seasonal housekeeping job? Linen porter, assistant housekeeper, housekeeper, housekeeping member, assistant executive housekeeper, executive housekeeper, janitorial manager, housekeeping director, or habitation sanitation engineer. That's a lot of titles, but whichever it ends up being, ultimately you are keeping the house. Contrary to how that sounds, you don't actually get to keep the house. Titles and deeds probably won't be exchanged, and you probably won't end up actually owning the building. Instead, it's more like keeping the house clean. And since the house isn't already clean, the best title should be, in the end, house cleaning. So there it is, age-old question answered. Housekeeping is house cleaning. But really, there's a, a whole lot more involved. And seasonally, there is a fair amount of money to be made. So what actually is involved? What do housekeepers do? Well, to answer that, first we need to look at where housekeeping jobs are. In the seasonal job industry, housekeeping jobs are going to be almost entirely in resorts, hotels, motels, and lodges. These locations can range from ultra-luxury ski or fishing lodges to your standard roadside murder motel. It's important to look into the company before taking the job. Fortunately, the murder motel business strategy doesn't tend to last very long, so most of the jobs are in murder-free businesses and are actually quite nice. In fact, some of them are very nice. And in these nice places, housekeepers are the true heroes of the hotel industry. Depending on the size of the resort or lodge, a housekeeping job could entail a variety of things, largely depending on the number of rooms available. A large resort with many rooms, you may only be required to turn over rooms. That means clean up after guests by changing the linens, Blankets, replace the towels, clean the bathroom, the windows, sweep, vacuum, spruce it up, make it nice, put a mint on the pillow, vacuum the hallway outside the room, maybe 10 to 20 rooms in an 8-hour shift, and then your day is done. Or if you're in a smaller lodge that only has 3 cabins or so, you may find yourself turning over the cabins, as well as doing the laundry, cleaning the reception area, and the conference room, maybe the linens for the attached restaurant, and then restocking the towels for the pool. A good rule of thumb is the smaller the business, the more broad the job description will probably be. Like, a very large resort will have an entire laundry department while a very small operation will need you to spend time in the laundry room. There are, of course, pros and cons to each of these scenarios, and will come down to your own personal preference when deciding on who you want to work for. And in the end, you are going to need to clean, more or less, anywhere you're assigned to. Housekeeping is typically considered an entry-level job, which means that you don't need any experience to get in, and since it is one of the most in-demand positions in the seasonal industry, almost anybody can get a housekeeping job practically anywhere they want to be. You will more than likely need to be able to push furniture around and regularly be able to lift 30 to 50 pounds of laundry. Although 50 pounds of laundry sounds like a lot. It's also a job where you will be on your feet all day, which is something to consider. There are some upsides, though, like choosing your company. Being such a high-demand position, you can quite easily choose the location and company that you want to work for. You can't have a hotel, lodge, or resort without housekeeping, giving you the ability to truly choose where you want to be, whether it's the Grand Canyon, upstate New York, the Florida Keys, 
or this terrifying clown-themed motel across the street from a cemetery in the small town of Tonopah, Nevada. I wouldn't do that one. Almost every housekeeping job is going to come with housing. You may have to pay a little, but there are quite a few places out there that will have free housing, and many of them will even give you three meals a day as well, especially if you're on a ranch. That's just a thing. If you are not exactly a people person and don't want to have to answer a lot of questions or chit-chat too much with the clientele, you may like a housekeeping job. Since a lot of the work is mostly behind the scenes, you probably won't interact with the guests too much. Of course, you still need to be relatively friendly and helpful to people. Most of the face-to-face -face time with guests will most likely be limited compared to other jobs in the seasonal industry. Some of the not-so-great. People can be horrible, disgusting slobs when it's not their own home. You may find a towel is being used in place of napkins while eating a leftover rack of barbecue ribs. Or hair that looks like a small rat in the shower. Or a toilet clogged with who knows what. All that stuff, that's kind of your problem. Not to mention dirty sheets and pillows and the like. If stuff like that gives you the willies, you may need to find a different department. Though some may argue that housekeeping is the most important job of any hotel or lodge, in some people's eyes, it is close to, if not the lowest, rung on the ladder. And in some situations, the guests, or the management even, may not give proper respect where it's due, and you may have to deal with jerks. And if you find yourself being treated like garbage by the management, leave a review on Glassdoor, and don't come back to that place next season. Also, leave it in the comments below. Tell me about it. Housekeeping may be considered lower on the totem pole by some, but at least it can pay pretty well in the right places if you look around. A quick check online, you might find an average range from $15 to $20 an hour, or $2,000 a month, or $115 a day, most of which include housing at no cost, uh, some include meals, and all include tips. Yep, tips. Housekeepers do get tips. While not as regularly as what's often referred to as a tip-based job, like bartenders and waitstaff, it's fairly common for appreciative guests to leave a few bucks on the pillow or the side table for the housekeepers when checking out. And then there are also pooled tips that are split between the entire staff, either at the end of guest stays or at the end of the month. These are usually added to your paychecks. Some places advertise this as an average of around an extra 500 bucks a month. Quick math of 15 bucks an hour, 40 hours a week with room and board for five months, along with decent tips, could be around 15 grand for the season, which could be all savings if you are financially conscious. This all varies depending on the company and location, of course. So, as always, I recommend you do your research before taking the job. Summer seasons can start as early as April or May and run through September or October. And winter seasons may start in October and run through May. And any place that operates year-round will most likely take you on at any time and maybe a year-round job for you if you like it. Housekeeping jobs are everywhere. If you want to work in a place where you can get out and hike in the summer or hit the slopes in the winter during your time off, coolworks.com, uh, indeed.com, and occupationwild.com are great places to start looking. So that's today's video on housekeeping jobs. Thank you for watching it. Hit the thumbs up button and, of course, subscribe. Have you ever worked a seasonal housekeeping job? What did you think about it? Did you like the company that you worked for? Would you do it again? Please leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear about your experiences as a seasonal job pro. Thanks again for watching.